All right, Abomination of Desolation, Part 3. Daniel, Chapter 9. Uh, I guess we'll start in verse 19. O Lord, hear, O Lord, forgive. Now this is Daniel praying. O Lord, hearken and do, defer not for thine own sake. O my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And whilst I was speaking and praying, confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before, before the Lord, my God, for the holy mountain of my God, yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, now Gabriel was an angel, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me at the time of the evening oblation, and informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Why is Daniel greatly beloved? Because he confessed his sin and humbled himself, people. Think about that. For thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks. Oh, we're going to go into this. Seventy weeks. What are seventy weeks? Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish the transgression. Now, personally, I think the 70 weeks applies to 70 years. Um, and we'll go into that later. Uh, there's a thing called the Feast of Weeks. It occurs once a year. So 70 Feasts of Weeks would be 70 years. And besides, in the previous study, uh, we read where it was referenced that Jeremiah said that Judah would go into captivity for 70 years. We did that, I think, in part one. All right, so. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring an everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Now, obviously... This is a reference to Christ. Verse 5. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandments to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah of uh, the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Read about that in Ezra and Nehemiah. Now, listen. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And that, ha um, you know, this is talking about the Messiah, okay? Christ. Uh, let's see, and, uh, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. That happened in 70 AD with, when Rome came in and destroyed the army, uh, with their army and destroyed Jerusalem. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. Oh, flood. Yeah, I had one of my videos deleted by the tube as I talked about the flood of the dragon. Um, and unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many, not all. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. When Christ was crucified, people, all right, he confirmed the covenant, okay, and then he's 
the, the blood sacrifices were fulfilled. They were paid in full. There was no reason. The blood sacrifices became a abomination after the sacrifice of Christ. What the priests were doing in the temple after Christ died was an abomination, people. Abomination. All right, the next study I'm going to do is going to be on um, the last, well, the, the crucifixion. The last, the last moments of Christ. Um, so let's take a look. Uh, all right, so the covenant. All right, let's take a look at weeks. You know, they talked about the weeks. Now, in the book of Exodus, chapter 34. Ah, uh, boy. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. These are where the Lord laid down his laws for government. And you got to realize something. There were two, uh, basically three sets of laws. There were the, the moral laws, which was basically the Ten Commandments. Christ broke it down into two. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. Okay, those were the moral laws. God didn't want, you know, just because Christ died on the cross and supposedly did away with the laws doesn't mean today you can be a hitman for the mafia. Just because you believe in Jesus, you're saved. And there are idiots that teach that. That you could be a hitman for the mafia, and as long as you believe in Jesus, you can murder people because your sins are forgiven and the laws were nailed to the cross. There are goats, satanic liars, that teach that. Seriously, they do. But, all right, so there were the moral laws. There were the laws of blood sacrifice, which is what the uh, Levi Levite priesthood was doing, like Aaron and and Moses, uh, they were sacrificing animals on and burning them on the altar, which is what uh, they want to rebuild the temple for. And then there were the laws that the king was to enforce. Remember uh, the judges. If you've ever read the book of Judges, that's what the judges did. Samson, Deborah, uh, they were kind of the rulers. Remember, I hope you remember the story when uh, two women had children. They were living together, and the one woman's child died. And then she switched children with the other woman. And then they came before Solomon and said, this woman took my child. No, this woman took my child. You know, And then they were arguing back and forth. And Solomon, wanting to decide whose child the woman was, said, well, you know what? Cut the child in half and give each kid half. And then the mother said, no, don't do that. Give this woman, give the woman the child instead of killing it. But the other woman, whose child it was not, said, no, divide the child, cut it in half. So Solomon had his soldiers Remove the child from the woman that did the switcheroo and gave it to the real mother. And Solomon did it by the Holy Spirit. And if you don't know that story, you should be you should read the Old Testament sometime. So there were the priests, blood sacrifice, the moral laws, and then there were the laws of the king. Uh, king Josiah got rid of the satanic priests. King Josiah got rid of the sodomites. Okay? He got rid of them. And when it says he took them out of the land, it doesn't mean he bought them a Greyhound bus ticket and gave them a ride somewhere else. No. He got rid of them. Period. 
those were the laws, the three groups of laws. The priesthood laws that applied to the, the Levitical priesthood, the moral laws that applied to everybody, and then there were the laws for government, which was for the king. And I'll guarantee you, if we follow those today, we would have a better world. Uh, for example, if somebody got caught stealing, they had to repay four times. Doesn't that, you know, instead of putting them in a warehouse to learn with other criminals to learn how to steal better, called a prison, you know. All right. In Exodus chapter 34, verse 22, it says, And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the first fruits of wheat harvest and the feast of ingathering at the year's end thrice or three times thrice in the year shall all your men children appear before the Lord the God of Israel now uh, this was I believe uh, 50 I think it was 50 50 weeks after Passover. Passover was, um, I think it was two weeks after the spring equinox, which was the time, I'm not sure. Well, Passover is not Easter. Passover is when they were, went out of Egypt, they sacrificed the lamb. Christ was crucified roughly around Passover. He was the sacrificial lamb. Okay? Fifty weeks later, okay, fifty weeks later, after this, was when the Feast of Weeks happened. Now, that roughly corresponded with the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, all the, the apostles and a bunch of believers were in a room together and the Holy Spirit came in and gave them power. They were able to speak in tongues and, and not what the Pentecostals are doing. No, they, they were speaking in languages that other people could understand. That's like me uh, being instantly being able to speak Russian or French or German when I'd never studied it before, never spoke it before. And if I remember correctly, penta means 50, if I remember correctly. I mean, if you want to do a bigger study on it, you, you know, you can. I mean, I'm just trying to give you an overview but, um, you know, seven sevens was 49. Seven, you know, the weeks, the Feast of Weeks. All right, so let's take a look. All right, according to uh, Wikipedia, it says this, uh, the Feast of Weeks occurs 50 days after pass Passover, and the uh, Jews that spoke Greek gave it the name Pentecost, which means the 50th day. So... Let's take a look at Pentecost. All right, so this occurs. Uh, we're going to go more into that. You know what? Let's, uh, let's cut it off here because I don't have time to explain. All right. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.